I'm sure you guys probably saw the thumbnail coming into this. We need to talk about Joe Biden's cognitive abilities, his uh, the possibility that maybe he has dementia. I've had a lot of people asking me about this lately, so you know what? Let's talk about it. A while back, there was this clip making the rounds in right-wing YouTube, right-wing Twitter, and, and places like that. Let's just watch the clip and see what happens. This is Joe Biden meeting the Pope. Thank you for that. So uh, in this clip, Biden had just given the Pope a coin. Thank you for that. It was a famous African-American baseball player. So here's the premise of the clip. Biden says, you're a famous African-American baseball player while shaking his hand, right? And then there's just complete silence after. Baseball player in America. I know. I know. I know. Somebody walks up and talks to the Pope. And then it cuts off. And here's another clip that was talking about the same thing. Joe Biden has a total mental breakdown during his visit with the Pope. American President Joe Biden tells the Pope, you're a famous African-American baseball player in America with a clown face over Biden. J. Biden to Pope, you're the famous African-American baseball player in America. You're the famous African-American baseball player in America. So this is from October 29th, 2021, I think. This has been going around all over the place for a while now. And it is one of the reasons why people believe that Joe Biden has dementia. Now let's watch the original clip in its entirety. Thank you for that. It is a famous African-American baseball player in America. And he didn't get to play. How about that? It was cut off right before a story was told. Isn't that interesting? This is the Pope's translator because he doesn't speak English very well. Joe Biden walked up to the Pope to tell him a story. He realized the Pope didn't speak English very well, so he spoke a sentence, waited for the translator to come up, and then told the next sentence. That's actually what happened here. Does Joe Biden have some kind of a cognitive disability? Probably, a little. The dude's like 79 years old or something now, or 80, somewhere in there. I'm sure he's slowed down a little bit. He does not have dementia by any stretch of the imagination. But thanks to... Clips like this right here. Thank you, Thank you for that. It was a famous African-American baseball player. Thanks to those clips, it's spread far and wide that the guy can't cobble together a sentence, that he doesn't know where he is or what's happening in any given moment. It is pure, unadulterated propaganda. Now, there are also a couple of examples of Joe Biden not being able to, like, get a sentence out. He kind of skips over certain words or whatever. That's because he's had a stutter since he was a child. And the fact that he's capable of holding a press briefing at all with few to no stutters is a testament to how hard he's worked over the course of his life to eliminate the existence of that stutter. So all of the Joe Biden dementia stuff, in my opinion, which is based in fact and information, is pure propaganda. Let's watch the rest of this just so that you guys have the context necessary to understand exactly what was happening here. So he walks up to the Pope. He's about to tell a story. He says there was not... You are a famous African-American baseball player. He said, there was a famous African-American baseball player. It was the start of a story. And he didn't get to play in the Major League Baseball until he was 45 years old because he was black. 
So he didn't get to play in the major leagues, I think, or whatever, because he was black. He was a pitcher. And usually pitchers lose their arm when they're 35. In general, loro non guardano come già. He pitched to win on his 47th birthday. E invece, the press walked in the locker room and said his name was Satchel Page. Si chiamava Satchel Page. Allora, gli giornalisti sono andati nello spogliatoio. The commander Excess said, Satch, no one's ever pitched to win at age 47. How do you feel about pitching to win on your birthday? E tutti hanno detto, nessuno ci è mai riuscito a fare questo a 47 anni. Come ti senti averlo fatto il giorno del tuo compleanno? E lui guardò a me e disse, boys, that's not how I look at age. So, anyway, the point is, it was just propaganda designed to make you think that the guy has some, cogn uh, some kind of a cognitive impairment. As far as I can tell, Joe Biden does not have any kind of cognitive impairment. He's just some older guy who shows his age to some degree there are no early signs of dementia or any of that stuff but i'll tell you how we can know for sure if he really does have dementia and this applies to trump too dementia usually comes in three stages there's the early stage the middle stage and the late stage okay each stage generally takes about two years so from the first signs you have two years before you reach the middle stage. Two more years until you reach the late stage, and then two more years of that. So when do these people believe that Joe Biden started showing signs of cognitive impairment? Roughly around the time the primaries came along, back in 2019, right? I would say, 2019. So by this point, if Joe Biden really did have some cognitive impairment, we should see him breaking down completely and being incapable of recognizing where he is and things like that. There are different types of dementia, by the by. Alzheimer's is one of them. Lewy body dementia is another. They are never super specific when they accuse Joe Biden of having dementia, of what type he may have. But there are different stages here. So the early stage is mild. Uh, common difficulties include coming up with the right word or name, remembering names when introduced to new people, having difficulty performing tasks in social work, or I'm sorry, in social or work settings, forgetting material that was just read, losing or misplacing a valuable object, experiencing increased trouble with planning or organizing. Middle stage is where we would be right now with Joe Biden if he actually did have it, because it's been at least three years since these accusations popped up, right? Being forgetful of events or personal history, feeling moody or withdrawn, especially, especially in socially or mentally challenging situations, being unable to recall information about themselves like their address or telephone number, uh, experiencing confusion about where they are or what day it is, requiring help choosing proper clothing for the season or occasion, having trouble controlling their bladder, experiencing changes in sleep patterns, showing an increased tendency to wander and become lost, demonstrating personality and behavioral changes, including suspiciousness and delusions or compulsive repetitive behavior like hand wringing or tissue shredding. Now, the far right Trump supporters are going to look at this list and pick out a single instance of uh, or a single example of everything on this list for Joe Biden. In my opinion, he's not he, he isn't even in early stage dementia, in my opinion, not even close. I have not seen the signs necessary to convince me that he has any kind of cognitive impairment beyond just being a little bit older. I'm not a psychologist. I don't have a PhD in this or anything like that. I have a two-year degree in psychology, but we didn't cover this. It was focused on substance abuse counseling. Either way, um, despite the fact that I'm not a, a qualified professional and have no place to like diagnose anybody or anything like that, I just don't see it. I just don't. And this same thing applies to Donald Trump. We started seeing weird stuff happen to the guy back in, I don't know, 2018 maybe? Best case scenario, let's say each stage takes three years, right? It's 2022 right now. We should start seeing Donald Trump 
exhibiting signs like this in mild stage. He should be in the mild phase right now, um, best case scenario. By 2024, when he's running again, by 2025, when the next president is inaugurated, whether, whether that's Biden or Trump or anybody at all, they should be, hypothetically, Trump or Biden, completely incapable of functioning by the time the next presidential inauguration takes place. This is a slow-progressing disease, in a sense, but six years is not all that long when you think about it, especially when you're dealing with like presidential elections and stuff. I am very hesitant to accept the claim that anybody has dementia, um, particularly Joe Biden. It's completely unreasonable. So anyways, let's listen to the first voicemail I have here because somebody had a question for me. Let's see what they had to say. Hey, Owen, this is Andrew from Saskatchewan, Canada. I just have a question just related to, like, um, a far-right conspiracy theory about um, Joe Biden having um, dementia and stuff like that. Like, of course, I know that it's not true, and, yeah, yeah, you know, like, obviously, Joe Biden doesn't have dementia, but, like, where, where did the um, conspiracy originate? Like, like, how did it, like, get so prominent amongst the far-right, and not just the far-right, but, like, the, the, right, the right itself, of course? Like in gen like the general right wing person, you know. I'd love to know what you what the answer is. Thanks. Well, I love what you do. Bye. Yeah, I appreciate the voicemail. The answer is, of course, clips like this. This was not the first one by any means. This, like I said, this whole thing with the baseball. This happened, I think, October twenty ninth, twenty twenty one. So that was a full nine months after he was inaugurated or 10 months. And it was a year, year and a half, maybe, after these accusations started flying around in the first place. There were super cuts that were released by, like, Republican PACs and, you know, influencers and people like that. Super cuts of Joe Biden, like, wandering around aimlessly and not being able to speak coherently and stuff. Like I said, it was all propaganda. It was all propaganda. The dude has never had a problem with this, in all seriousness. The reason I'm talking about this in the first place is because I saw a video released recently by a YouTuber that fancies themselves a psychologist. I don't know if they have like any of these qualifications, if they actually are a psychologist, or what anything. I don't know anything about it. And I saw supercuts like this. Like this one right here. Dude played this baseball one in his video. When you play blatant propaganda like this, I'm sorry, I cannot take you seriously anymore. It's ridiculous, man. Pumpkin J, from what little I know from working with dementia patients for years, this behavior doesn't match that. Not a diagnosis, though. Right. Yeah, that's that, that was my impression of it also. It just does not seem like Biden has a... Biden has dementia. It doesn't seem like it at all. And honestly, I'm very skeptical of the idea that Trump has dementia also. Maybe? I've seen some weird things that make me wonder, but it's already been three or four years since we saw the first signs. He should have progressed a lot further by now. This is fundamentally the difference between uh, me, at the very least, and people on the far right, Trump supporters, when faced with evidence contrary to what you believe, you should be willing to move over to a position that relates to reality more closely. There's this concept called cognitive dissonance where there's a stress created in your brain when your beliefs and reality don't match up with each other. There are four different ways to alleviate that stress. Uh, I forget what they all are, but a couple are convincing others that you're correct, despite the fact that you're very obviously not, or coming up with a new narrative, a new like idea of how the world works to account for the new information, no matter how ridiculous, right? So here we have an example of people who have a cognitive dissonance. They claim Joe Biden has dementia, and they've been claiming it for three years at least, maybe four. 
but we're faced with the reality that he doesn't have it every time he goes out there and gives a coherent speech, which he does fairly often, right? So how do they work around that? They claim that he has handlers. They claim that he's using a teleprompter as if any of this would matter ultimately if he really did have dementia and if he has for the past four years, as if they'd be able to fake it through, you know, full-blown dementia. It's ridiculous. But they build up these big, ridiculous stories and try to convert as many believers as possible because it alleviates the anxiety, the, the stress that comes with cognitive dissonance. Don't be like that. When faced with information that conflicts with the beliefs that you currently hold, change your beliefs. You don't have to believe this thing or that. You're not locked into this. You're not going to die if you find out that something that you believed isn't true. When you come to the realization that reality and what you believe are not connected to each other, change your beliefs to fit within reality. Please, like, if people would just do that, the world would be a much better place. Instead, they come up with these bizarre stories that they spin up out of nothing to explain how they could have been right in the very beginning and reality, you know, is bent around that. By building conspiracy theories primarily. That's how this happens. They build these gigantic conspiracy theories to make it out like, you know, there are hundreds of thousands of people involved in hiding all this information from you. It's insane. Just change your beliefs to match with reality. That's what I do. Why doesn't everybody do that? In the case of politics specifically, there are Republican politicians at the top who have a vested interest in reaffirming their constituents' delusions uh, because you know, they can fundraise off of it. So no matter how ridiculous and obnoxious and unhinged from reality their beliefs are, these Republican politicians will keep reaffirming it. You know why? They win elections when they claim the election was stolen. They win elections when they claim Joe Biden has dementia. They win elections when they do this stuff. It's a positive feedback loop. It's nonsense from beginning to end but they're incentivized to feed into the delusions. Don't be like that. I know it hurts. I know it sucks. But at some point, you have to come to terms with the fact that you were wrong. There is no more important lesson in life that everybody should learn than to say, I was wrong. If you can learn to say that, you're in good shape. And he wrote down, we are going, he wrote a course, to new Israel, new Israel, new Israel. And when they came off the ship, they didn't plant an American flag. They planted the Christian flag Mm -hmm. on the soil. They dedicated, George Washington knelt and prayed, dedicated America where the Twin Towers stand. Julie M., does this new Israel guy think George Washington came over on the Mayflower? That's a good point. The answer is maybe. Everything that he said in that was complete nonsense. Like none of it was based in reality. None of it. But he said it with such confidence that the people on the other end who were listening believed him. George Washington knelt and prayed, dedicated America where the Twin Towers stand. None of it's true. None of it. Or stood. That's where America came into covenant with Yahweh, with God, was where the Twin Towers stand. Wow. Isn't that something? That is where George Washington prayed, right? There's a chapel right outside the Twin Towers where George Washington... That one's true, that there's a chapel there. St. Paul's Chapel? George Washington did not kneel and pray in front of it. He didn't come into covenant with Yahweh or any of that garbage. It's all made up. That picture of him praying by the horse, that's where it happened. There is a picture of George Washington kneeling by a horse and praying. It's not based in reality. That didn't actually happen. That's where he dedicated our nation in covenant to God. If you will make us a great nation, deliver us from tyranny, then we will serve you. 
and he gave the nation to God at that point. Every signer that, of the Declaration of Independence were descendants of the tribes of Israel. Again, not true. None of it's true. The signers of the Declaration of Independence were descendants of the tribes of Israel? You've got to be kidding me. Literally, the only true things that this guy has said so far are there is a painting of George Washington and there is a chapel, St. Paul's Chapel, outside where the Twin Towers stood. That's the, the only true things in this. This is a three-minute video. We're 57 seconds in. I don't think he says another true thing. We can trace it. We know it. And here's the thing you've got to understand about Israel. Most people think of Israel when you say the word Israel. They think of Jews. I was a doctor of theology. No, again, a lie. I was the youngest ordained evangelist in America at 14 years old. Another lie. The youngest ordained evangelist in America was a guy named Marjo. He was a televangelist from the 1970s. Marjo Gortner. He was three years old when he was ordained. So even if you were ordained at 14, you were not the youngest by any stretch of the imagination. It's just lie after lie after lie with this guy. At 14 years old. Wow. I've lived for the Lord my whole life. and I Another lie. He actually spent some time as an insurance salesman and defrauded some people in a life insurance scam and went to jail for it for a while. So even that, even his claim... Let me show you his mugshot. Here you go. Shane Vaughn's mugshot. He was uh, an insurance agent and faced fraud charges. It's a big thing, and I don't want to get into the explanation, but he defrauded somebody out of a bunch of life insurance money. So anyway, uh, just everything out of the guy's mouth is a lie. Every word practically, but he's a televangelist, and people believe the things that he says. I was dumb as a box of rocks and didn't know it at 40 years old because I thought, that a Jew meant Israel and an Israel meant Jew. Until I started studying my Bible and I found out that the first mention of the word Jew in the Bible is them fighting against Israel. Wow. When you come to understand that Israel... You know, that seems like a stupid realization to come to, but he's about to tell you why it's so relevant. Come to understand that Israel is not Jews and Jews is not Israel. When you get that, here's what happens. All of a sudden, and I'll do it real fast, at one time, they were one nation. King Solomon died, King Jeroboam, King Rehoboam, there yeah. was a split. Yeah. Mm. The Jews, the tribe of Judah, stayed in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. They kept the Sabbath, that's why they're still identifiable. They kept the Sabbath, that kept them identifiable for these thousands of years. I, this is another lie. The, the Jews are not descendants of the tribe of Judah. He's misunderstanding what that means. The Jews were descendants of Israel, the person named Israel. Uh, he had another name. I forget which one it was. It was Abraham, Isaac. Jacob was Israel. His name was changed to Israel. It's the sons of Jacob. That includes like Levi and uh, the Judah, uh, the tribe of Judah and... All of them. All 12. There were 12 of them total. So when he says Jews are the descendants of Judah, he's just full of it. The dude is completely full of it. Every word he says is a lie. However, there was 10 tribes. That there were 12 tribes. What is he talking about? That went to the north with King. Oh, God, see, I'm jumping the gun, man. I got to let them complete their sentence. I'm sorry about that. Let me just step back. Listen again. However, there was 10 tribes that went to the north with King Rehoboam in rebellion does he have evidence of this i've never heard this before in my life those tribes crossed over the caucasian mountains they were captivated by the germans they crossed over the caucasian oh are we out of time oh anyway so they crossed over i'll make it real quick <laughs> where they wound up at was the great british isles because the prophecy was that they would go mm -hmm. to the isles of the sea and from there we find those tribes making their way to the United States Thanks. of America. So there you go. There's Shane Vaughn's whole explanation that was nonsense from beginning to end. I think he said a total of three things that were true in the entire three-minute clip. The fact that there's a chapel outside the 9-11 buildings, there was a painting of George Washington, though it wasn't based in reality, and that there were a total of 12 tribes of Israel. Did he even say that? I'm not sure that he did. I'm just trying to give the guy extra credit here. 
Uh, he's full of it from beginning to end, but there's the basis for the Trump religion. That's why this is a relevant clip in the first place, because it's the basis of the belief that Donald Trump can be a messiah. Hey, Owen, this is Alex. I have a, uh, a, a thought experiment, really, I guess you could call it, uh, for you. Um, so a lot of people say, you know, just follow me, uh, follow me if you would on this. A lot of people say, you know, the devil is the biggest trickster out there and so on, so on. Uh, the, you, know, you know, father of lies, all this stuff. What if, what if the devil actually tricked everybody into thinking that um, he was actually Jesus? And, you know, he died for everybody's sins, but really it was the devil because he's the trickster. Um, just a thought experiment that I've just kind of been chuckling at for a little while and uh, wanted to get your thoughts on it. It's, uh, I get a lot of interesting answers when I, when I bring this up to people, so I would love to hear yours. Thank you very much, and uh, in enjoying the content, man. Thank you. Keep it up. Yeah, I appreciate that. Interesting uh, thought experiment. I have another one that's similar to that. I don't. Maybe this is what you were thinking, but let me lay this down for you. I heard from somebody a while back that they believed that the Bible was actually written by Satan. So there was an eternal struggle between God and Satan, and instead of God winning the battle, like the Bible says, actually Satan won the battle and elevated himself up to God level and then had his prophets write the Bible as though he was the good guy. When in reality, the person who lost the battle, which is God, was really the good guy. I mean, when you think about it, the person named as God in the Bible is an absolute monster. And God accuses Satan of all kinds of stuff that he never does. For example, Satan never told a lie in the entire Bible. You ever notice that? He told Adam and Eve, if they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or whatever, they would know good and evil. They would gain understanding and knowledge and everything. And what happened? They did. Also, God said they would die the day that they ate the fruit. They didn't. They lived for another 80-something years, supposedly, according to the Bible. Or how many years? Actually, it may have been like 800 years. I don't know how long they lived to be. But the point is, Satan never told a lie that I could find in the Bible. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Kind of weird, right? Kind of weird that Satan is the exact opposite of the way he's described by God in the Bible. Maybe Satan was the winner of the battle and had and that's who people have been worshiping the whole time who knows just throwing it out there knock it around the noggin hey owen i got a um, philosophical question for you it's gonna sound simple but trust me here it's gonna be very very um thought-provoking is morality subjective yes i know i thought about it ever since you made the statement that government only protects rights and not reinforces our morality. And I've been thinking about it, and the more I think about it, like... Yeah, let, let me just explain what the caller just said for those who are unfamiliar with the concept. There's this social contract theory kind of thing where the government is not supposed to enforce morality. In fact, it's a bad thing for the government to enforce morality, the government should only be protecting people's rights. No more, no less. So your right to swing your fist ends right here at the tip of my nose. You are perfectly free to swing your fist anywhere else. But if you swing it right here at the tip of my nose, that would be a violation of my rights. So the government protects your right to swing your fist, and they protect my right to not be attacked. So... Police stepping in and preventing you from punching me in the face is not a violation of your rights. It's a protection of mine. The government should have no say past that, basically. That's the whole philosophy behind it. So the government shouldn't legislate morality. They should only protect people's rights. No more, no less. That's the, con the, that's the idea behind 
what the caller just said. And I've been thinking about it, and the more I think about it, like all people, all different people have different kinds of morality, even if the even if the one of the moralities is wrong in the general society, but we're free to have our own kind of morality. Just wondering, just thinking about it. Thank you. I love what you do. Bye. Yeah, I appreciate it. Morality is most definitely subjective. We can see a perfect example of that at play with Iran. Right now in Iran, there are massive protests happening because... A woman was taken by the morality police for not wearing a hijab, and she died in their custody. The morality police arrested this woman for not wearing a hijab. And there's like a revolution happening at the moment. They are going absolutely heckin' batty, which I'm so glad about. It's fantastic. But think about that. It's a violation of their morality, which is enforced by law in Iran. To not wear a head covering. Is that... There's nothing objectively moral about that. Christians like to say there is objective morality in the Bible. And if you use the Bible as a moral guide, you can find that objective morality. In reality, that's not true. The Bible espouses so many different moral positions from beginning to end. It's impossible to base your moral system on it. There is a verse to back up any position, anything that you want to believe. It's in there. You can believe absolutely anything and find a Bible verse to support it. Even the flat earth. There are Bible verses to loosely support the flat earth. It's a big book. It's impossible to not cherry pick. So even people who who claim to have a source of objective morality are wrong. They started out with these moral ideas and beliefs and precepts and found verses to back those positions up, those already existing moral beliefs. That's actually how it works. Um, hi, Owen. My name's El Seely. Um, and I say them pronouns, please. Uh, and I'm from Colorado. I'm just curious, what types of schools Um, do Jehovah's Witnesses tend to send their children to? Do they tend to send them to, like, Christian schools or public schools? Um, I ask because it seems like maybe Christian schools would make their children, like, more easily indoctrinated. But if children are supposed to try and spread Jehovah's Witness information to other children, um, maybe those public schools would have a broader environment. So, um, yeah, I was just wondering about that. Love the show. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate the phone call. Uh, The answer is Jehovah's Witnesses view Christian schools as part of Christendom or part of like the the big evil cabal. Jehovah's Witnesses have a concept for the Illuminati too. It's just a different name, I guess. Uh, Christendom or the world. The big evil group of people out there who are trying to take Jehovah's Witnesses down. Kind of ridiculous. But anyway, yeah, they view Christian schools as like the root of all evil, basically and would never, ever send one of their children to a Christian school under any circumstances because they think that they are teaching them incorrectly or whatever else. So the answer is they definitely do send their children to public schools, but they're not really huge fans of public schools in general and what they teach them, so they teach their children various different things and exclude them from certain activities. They exclude them from any celebrations like Christmas or anything, they exclude them from saying the Pledge of Allegiance in the morning. They exclude them from sex ed classes. And if at all possible, depending on how much time the Jehovah's Witness has on their hands, they might even go as far as to homeschool their kids. I was homeschooled, and my friend growing up was homeschooled also. And it was bad. It was not good. It's just terrible, man. I am... Very opposed to homeschooling. Deeply opposed to it. 